Philosopher George Santayana once said that he who forgets history is destined to repeat it. Well, the three asteroid fragments that rained down on the Earth tonight uh, weren't the first and most likely they won't be the last. The crater at Winslow, Arizona, more than half a mile across, an enormous hole caused by an iron asteroid just 60 meters wide that hit more than 50,000 years ago. In 1908, an object the same size exploded a few miles above the ground near Tunguska River in Siberia. The shockwave, with the force of 15 hydrogen bombs, incinerated millions of acres in an impact area that would have spread from Maine to the Carolinas if it had hit the Northeast. But both of these were just BB shots compared to the big one. Known now as the KT event, scientists now believe an object in the order of 7 to 10 kilometers wide impacted 65 million years ago along the Mexican Yucatan Peninsula. A month after impact, the debris from the giant crater covered the Earth in a dust-like cloud that blocked out virtually all sunlight. Billions of life forms were killed within weeks and ultimately the dinosaurs that had ruled the world for 140 million years perished. And Sandy, if an asteroid even one half that size were to hit the Earth today, the death rate could easily match that of the Black Plague, which wiped out half the population in Europe during the Middle Ages. Well, the question I've got to put to you is how real is the threat to the Earth today? I'm afraid it's quite real. Two years ago, NASA scientists calculated that the odds of a person dying from a near-Earth asteroid were about 1 in 20,000, about the same as being killed in an airline crash. And that's what they assumed? Until tonight. You see, the danger is increasing. Why is that? Astronomers at NASA's JPL say there is a 20% likelihood that because of the meteor shower tonight, we can expect more of these Earth-bound asteroids. Forgive me, I apologize, but they're ready now for that report from NASA. And we go to the Johnson Space Center, where correspondent Matthew Jensen is standing by. Matt? Sandy, the men and women who track these giant near-Earth objects have been working nonstop to analyze the data ever since the first impact at 724 Central Time. We were inside the Operations Center, where we regularly follow the shuttle flights. Then, just moments ago, some data came in from NASA's big radio telescope at Goldstone in the Mojave Desert. And all reporters were asked to move behind this wall of glass. They say a statement is imminent, but right now, we're watching and waiting. We'll be back to you, Matt. But first, for an insight on what may be happening, we go to correspondent Warren Olney at Goldstone. Warren? Sandy, this enormous 70-meter steerable antenna is part of NASA's deep space network used to track spacecraft. When a comet or asteroid is identified by wide-field telescopes like the one at Mount Palomar, the data is fed here, and the space debris, as they call these killer rocks, is then tracked with precision. Now, the scientists who work here are normally rather cool, understated people. But about an hour ago, when the data on 6645 Venturi was fully analyzed, this marine helicopter made an unscheduled landing. A pair of MPs raced inside. They emerged minutes later with one of the scientists here, and they rushed him aboard the chopper. No word yet on the scientist's name or his position with NASA. But sources say he was flown to nearby Edwards Air Force Base for a trip by jet to the Space Center in Houston. Warren, what could have been so important that they couldn't have linked up with Houston by phone or a teleconference? Another good question with no answer from here, Sandy. One source says that the scientist's involvement may have something to do with the asteroid's trajectory, both before and after it broke up. Thank you very much. We've just received an update from correspondent Denise Wong in Beijing. There are no known casualties near the third impact site designated Charlie. However, the impact is said to have damaged the Tingshin Hydroelectric Dam, 40 kilometers to the south. Power outages have been reported throughout most of Langshan province, and the Chinese government is requesting emergency generating equipment and Red Cross assistance for the estimated 7.5 million people now without electricity or running water. Doctor, we've just gotten word on the condition of that little girl found wandering near the Wyoming impact site. We go now to evening World News correspondent Bree Walker standing by at Mercy Medical Center in Casper. The little girl we found at the scene was badly burned. She's in intensive care now, being treated for exposure and second-degree burns. Doctors have sedated her, and they say she's resting comfortably. Meanwhile, the Macomb County Sheriff's Department has set up a special hotline to try to find out who the little girl is. If you can help, here's the number, 1-800-555-4818. Bree Walker, Evening World News, Casper, Wyoming. There's more now on the fate of another victim, French skier Jean-Paul Chounard. 
After combing the area near the second asteroid impact site, French rescue workers came upon Jean-Paul Chounard huddled in a snow cave near the base of Mount Vinmen. We'll have an update soon from correspondent Paul Whitaker in southern France. Sandy, in this era of home video where people seem to shoot everything, I guess this was inevitable. We've just received tape from KWBF, our affiliate in Newcastle, Wyoming, some 80 miles from the impact site. It purports to show asteroid fragment Alpha streaking across the sky as it roars towards Thunder Basin. I'm told it was shot by Chris O'Neill, the father of three from Newcastle. The voice you're hearing is Mr. Okay. O'Neill's. Come on out, I'm freezing. <laughs> oh, Tyler, you look the great, vampire. pretty scary. Joshua? Gosh, that's an ugly mask, Ashley, buddy. You look great. Come on, doesn't she look Come on, Ashley, okay, Tyler, tell Daddy what you're going to say on. when you go to the front door. <laughs> Trick or treat. Oh, that's great. Oh, what is that? Get the kids in the house. The tape was analyzed by the FAA, and apparently that was the Alpha Fragment from 6645 Venturi. We're going to watch it once more as it comes into the camera's lens. Get the kids in the house. Sandy, we're happy to report that no one was hurt and the children went on to trick-or-treat with one incredible story to tell. Well, thank goodness for that. There's new information on that scientist rushed to Houston to confer with NASA officials. He is Dr. Avram Mandel, an astrophysicist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab. Sandy, sources say Dr. Mandel visits the Space Center here in Houston at least once a month, but this is far from a routine trip. In fact, we've just learned that he's flown here not on a conventional carrier, but in the jump seat of an Air Force F-16. With a maximum air speed of more than 1,400 miles an hour, the flight time from Edwards to Houston should put Dr. Mandel on the ground some 22 minutes from now. Sandy, correspondent Robert Marino has just flown in from Denver, and he is at the edge of Impact Site Alpha. Apparently, the police there have just changed the ground rules. Robert? All of the news crews here have been asked to pull back from the immediate edge of the crater. The official reason is safety. State police saying that there have been aftershocks as a result of the impact. But none of the press on the ground here has felt anything. And there's been stepped up activity at the crater by NASA scientists. We shot this video only moments ago. Sandy, as you can see, dozens of investigators from NASA and the Pentagon have been flown into the site, which is now beginning to resemble a small air base. Uh, you can see a chopper below landing, carrying additional troops armed with assault weapons. Why the government would need firepower like that at the site of a meteor impact is anybody's guess. Uh, we're told among the personnel being moved to the site is a team of map makers from the U.S. Geological Survey. In addition, the FAA has now established a no-fly zone immediately over the crater. They, they've made it quite clear that anyone violating this restriction would be fired upon. So these are the last pictures you're likely to see for a while. Uh, Sandy, at impact Robert, site... we're going to have to cut away. A statement is imminent from the press room at the Johnson Space Center. We go now to correspondent Matt Jensen. After a virtual blackout since the first impact, Dale Powell, NASA's Director of Community Relations, is about to speak. Mr. Powell, can you I have tell a, us... Um, I have a short statement. There will be no questions at this time. Let me just say uh, from the outset that what we're about to show you is based on findings that are preliminary at best. We didn't get that. The findings are not, I repeat, not definitive. Data just analyzed by the Space Center's computer suggests that the asteroid 6645 Venturi was approaching the Earth on a, on a precise trajectory for impact at 90 degrees north latitude when it broke up over the polar ice cap. The three debris segments that split apart landed at the following impact points. Uh, zero degrees longitude near Lord France. The other two sites were at 105 degrees west in Wyoming and the same longitude east in Mongolia, uh, here and here. All three sites were located at 45 degrees north latitude. What, they're, they're <laughs> filming it. So, uh, that is all we have at this point. Uh, Dale, Dale, wait a minute. You're saying they broke up over the North Pole and came down in a perfect pattern? That is yeah. correct. Uh, Dale, what does that mean? What did you from that? made no conclusions at this point. Well, what are the chances that a random asteroid would hit and break up and fall with such precision? No right. comment. No. Dale, well, what about me, the fact that Dr. Avram Mandel okay, is being sorry. flown here on an Air Force fighter jet? What about it? Well, you couldn't have gotten him down here any faster if you'd shot him from a cannon. What about that? Yeah. So what's your point? 
Well, according to his bio, he is a founding member of SETI. Does that mean extraterrestrials were involved? Like I said at the beginning, there are no questions. Come on, Dale. Well, no. Come on, let's just here. Come on, come on. Okay, stand by. I'm gonna go live here. There you have it, Sandy. Back during the Watergate, they would have called that a non-denial denial. This isn't like NASA. Ever since the Challenger disaster, they've been one of the most open agencies in the government. <clears throat> That's right, Sandy. But as soon as I mentioned SETI, uh, Powell shut right down. SETI was originally a NASA program. Uh, yes, but just last year, their funding was cut. Uh, most of the scientists here are members of SETI. Uh, and as you know, Sandy, uh, SETI is an acronym. It stands for the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. Now, these are scientists who are dedicated to the belief that uh, there is life on other planets. Our continuing coverage, Asteroid Fire from the Sky, will resume after this. Evening World News continues its coverage with Dr. Carolyn Jaffe and Sandra Van Oker. For those of you just joining us, we're tracking the story of a large near-Earth asteroid that broke up over the North Pole tonight and collided with the Earth at three sites in the United States, Europe, and Asia. We'll have more on the damage in a moment. But first, news on two of the survivors. Correspondent Paul Whitaker begins with this live report from Lourdes in southern France. Sandy, rescuers are bringing skier Jean-Paul Chenard down from the mountain where he's been stranded since the asteroid hit earlier this evening. We've been getting reports that his condition is critical. He's uh, semi-comatose and suffering from frostbite and third-degree burns. Getting him down off this mountain has been an incredible task, as you can well imagine, and, and his wife Sylvia is clearly relieved that he's been found alive. She's going to accompany him to the burn center in Nice. We're going to follow this story, and we'll get back to you as soon as we know more. This is Paul Whitaker, Evening World News, reporting from Lourdes. We switch now to Mercy Medical Center in Casper, Wyoming, where correspondent Bree Walker is standing by. Bree? Sandy, a woman called here to the hotline just moments ago and said the little girl is her daughter. The sheriff gave few other details, but did issue a statement confirming the identity of the little girl as eight-year-old Kimberly Hastings of Corrales, New Mexico. Apparently, she had been missing since last Friday. No one knows yet how she got this far north. Corrales is almost 400 miles from where the asteroid hit. Doctors say she is still in critical condition tonight, yet she is one lucky little girl. With the mystery over little Kimberly's identity cleared up, we shift now to a larger question. How is it that an asteroid could break up and fall to Earth with an almost geometric precision? My colleague, science editor, Dr. Carolyn Jaffe, has found one astronomer who believes he has the answer. You are looking at the sea of tranquility, a vast stretch of craters created over the centuries when asteroids pockmarked the lunar surface. This shot of the moon was taken through a 158-inch Cassegrain reflector telescope. The man operating it is Dr. Robert Perlman, a Caltech PhD and astronomer who has personally identified a half dozen major comets. Dr. Perlman, what's the significance of tonight's event? Well, you see, in, in astronomical terms, tonight's event coming so close to Shoemaker-Levy 9 is really unique in recorded history. We understand that you actually have a photograph of 6645 Venturi taken just before it broke up. Um, this was taken at an elevation of 12,500 miles above the pole. Now, four minutes later, when we attempted to take another plate, the asteroid exploded. Dr. Perman, Sander Van Oker. Ah, oh, Mr. Van Oker. I understand you're the co-chair with Dr. Avram Mandel of SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. I am. Well, doctor, what do you make of the announcement by NASA that the asteroid fragment struck in precise order? Well, it just confirms what we've been saying for years. I mean, with, with 200 billion stellar systems in the Milky Way galaxy alone, the existence of intelligent life beyond Earth is uh, undeniable. Perhaps, but why jump to that conclusion in this case just because the asteroid fragments hit at the same latitude? Ah, uh, well, that's a very, very good question. Let me see if this... Uh... Yes, yes. Uh, can you see this? Yes, we can. All right. Um, 6645 Venturi approached the Earth on a dead center trajectory for the North Pole. The angles of the three impact sites, A, B, and C, are exactly 45 degrees. Huh. 
The odds against that happening in nature are something like, oh, uh, 10 to the 58th power.